welcome to another chat with Beyond Type 2. Today is a very, very special chat because I have a very special guest with me. Uh, her name is Lori Hernandez and she is an Olympian. And we're excited to chat with her today because we're going to be talking about type 2 diabetes, family and support. Um, I'm so grateful to be joined here by her today. Lori, would you mind introducing yourself? Hello, um, I'm Laura Hernandez. I was part of the 2016 Women's Olympic Gymnastics team and current, currently training for the 2021 Tokyo Olympic Games. Um, and I am partnered with Eli Lilly and I get to talk about, you know, essentially my dad and his journey with type two diabetes. And I am very happy to be here. So thank you for having me. Yes, thank you so much, Lori. And let's just, you know, kind of jump right into it. Um, how has your father inspired you during your journey to becoming an Olympian? Yeah, you know, I since I was a little kid, I always watched my dad like take care of himself, prick his finger, take his medication. And, you know, when you're a kid and you watch that, I don't really think you think anything of it. You're like, oh, that's my dad. Like, that's just what he does. Um, but, you know, subconsciously it became a thing of like, oh, I'm watching him constantly take care of himself and do preventative work. And then in being a professional athlete, it's like, well, if I have injuries, if I have different things like that, I'm gonna go ahead now and take care of it because my, my dad just does it second nature. Like he doesn't think twice about it, yeah. so am I. And so it became a thing of like, well, I take care of myself because I watched him do it. And that is such a like important part of my journey is doing preventative work and going to physical therapy um, and, and doing anything necessary to make sure that I can be the best person that I can be for the things that I'm doing. And my dad played a really big role in that. Oh, that's awesome. And like that, that support when it comes to living with type two diabetes, we talk a lot about that beyond type two, about having that support. It, it really makes the journey so, so much easier. Um, but I, I definitely want to ask you about going back to his diagnosis and how you and him and your family reacted. And what was that moment where you said, okay, we are going to just tackle this together. What was that like for you and your family? So I think he was diagnosed in his mid forties. Um, and around that time, I was not yet out of the womb. So <laughs> um, I, I think it was around then actually that, that you know, I was born and, and as I grew up, it was something that I just watched him do. It wasn't really, um, it wasn't a moment that I was present for, but I, I watched him constantly take care of himself and watched as, you know, technology grows and things change. And, and that was really interesting, you know? Um, I remember being little and watching him prick his finger and being like, what is that man doing? He's yeah. bleeding. Why is he doing that? And my dad was like, oh, you know, I have to check my blood sugar, make sure I'm okay. My grandma also had type one. And so she would do the same. And oh. I watched her do insulin shots every night um, and every morning. And it was really an interesting thing. It got to the point where, you know, maybe her hands were a little unsteady and I would have to help her do the shots. Yeah. Um, and so it was just, there, there was a lot of that representation in the house, of like being proactive and taking care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. How like that behavior is, is normalized. Um, I find that a lot of times when I do talk to people with type two diabetes, they always have a family member who they've watched, you know, prick their finger, finger, give themselves an insulin shot, kind of wash their carbs a bit. And, you know, they're, they also learn about some of the misconceptions that are, that's around type two diabetes. Would you mind talking about some of the misconceptions that you and your father have, have learned and, and try to like overcome? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's more than I can imagine, but the main one would be in like, you know, oh, you can't have this food or you can't have that. Like, you can't have sugar. You can't do X, Y, or Z. Like, yes, you can. Like, y'all are going to have to educate yourselves for a little bit. Like, hang on. Let's see what's actually happening in there. And it's understanding like, okay, what makes him spike? Is that something that he can take care of? Can he be proactive about it? And like, you know, there's a lot of differences. Um, really, you know, there's, there's a difference between type one and type two, being able to, you know, in type one, do mealtime insulin um, and be able to track and understand what you're about to eat. Um, whereas type two, you know, keeping an eye out on it and understanding like what's going to spike, what's not, but like, there's no limits to anything. You don't have to, you know, staple down your life to make sure that everything is a certain way because other people think so like that is a common misconception um eating too much sugar therefore triggering diabetes like that's a misconception yeah yep. oh my god it's yep. like oh say because you had too much sugar no <laughs> oh no yeah. it's an ancestral th like what it's no just, it's also a lot of genetics there like There's, it's a lot of genetics like it is yeah. literally genetic like there is 
it doesn't track one that does not lead to another like having too much sugar does not just magically shut your pancreas down so exactly. there's a lot there's a misconception in there exactly um <laughs> i'm trying to think what else uh my, my roommate was just diagnosed with type one um like two months ago and so that has also been an interesting journey um but like carrying juice boxes everywhere yeah uh, yeah yeah Yep. can we say <laughs> there's like a bunch of different snacks that we have carried in the fridge like um we have a bin of just 15 like around 15 whether it's like 13 to 16 like we have slow acting carbs we have juice boxes we have apple sauces like things that you know are, are entering differently and, and we'll hit at a different time so um yeah i'm trying to think what else but those are like the main misconceptions that i've seen or like um oh like can you not do x y or z yes you can or like you know she has a dex so it's like can you not go swimming yes you can like yes. <laughs> so just and people thinking that like you know it, if you're not educated then it's understandable but it's right. like thinking that your life now stops or that your life is over that you can't do what other people do just because you have diabetes and that's not the case at all it's just managing it and doing things that make you feel comfortable but that does not have to stop you from doing anything she's a professional trampoline she's training for the olympics and she's got type one so like that is awesome congrats to her that's yeah that's seriously i mean uh laura you you just hit it just so well on the head on like those mis misconceptions especially like you know, stopping your life. I have heard so many stories from about from people with type two who say like, I I can still I can still do the things I love. I can still eat my favorite foods. And we're like, yeah, you can. It just you may just have to do it in a different way. Um, it just really quickly. Do you, uh, are there any like foods that you and your father just like have that? What are you, some of your favorite foods that you enjoy? Oh, okay. So whenever I would have a really bad like workout when I was a kid, ice cream was our go-to thing mm -hmm. and so <laughs> like his thing is vanilla ice cream with caramel on top yeah and we would always go to like the nearby ice cream store um and I would have a rough day and he was like does this call for ice cream and I was like yeah it does and I was a kid so I didn't understand how big of a deal that was for him to say like let's go get ice cream like yeah. you know not really understanding his struggle and what that might feel like for him he just wanted me to feel good and so like that was Aww. that's our main one like homemade cookies are a big thing there are you know there there are no like limits to anything it's yeah. it, again, it just goes to like how does your body react to it what are the precautions that you can take to make sure that you're okay and you can enjoy yeah. this without having to like rush or keep that in mind but like it doesn't have to stop so yeah those are the main ones exactly and to our audience who's watching like you you are hearing what Lori is saying you can just hear the power and positivity that she and her father share so I, I hope that you're feeling encouraged if you feel like you have to be limited or if you feel like there's something that you can't enjoy you you can you can definitely live your best life with the type two now um how has uh how is your father's uh, diagnosis inspired you to stay healthy and, and uh, remain competitive? Yeah, I think the main one kind of goes back to watching him take care of himself. Like, if I have an injury, um, do my best not to let it linger and going to physical therapy and being proactive about it and knowing that like, your body is, is this vessel that wants to love you and wants to protect you and wants to take care of you. And when it cannot, that's where you step in. Um, and it's being preventative and knowing like this thing is rooting for you this like <laughs> like yeah. your body is rooting for you and so it's kind of one of those things of like all right well like might as well be kind to it it is trying yeah. to show up and when it can't there's a lot of grace in that and knowing like okay it's not me it's my body like how yeah. can I protect my body how can I love my body like it, you know so I, I think that was huge and like watching him kind of again, like prick his finger, take medication. It was like taking care of something, even though it's himself, if that makes any sense. It does. So like, that's yeah. how I started to see like my body in gymnastics. And it was like, okay, there's, this is this thing that like my body performs, but like I am doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So if my body is hurting. I take care of it. Yeah. 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 I, I, I really like how you said like your body is rooting for you. And, you know, we, the way we try to frame um, living with type 2 diabetes, especially if beyond type 2, is that your body, you and your, you and your body, you have to work together, which means that you and your diabetes have to work together. Yeah. You, you, you two are, are partners in this journey and you're going to learn something new about your body and you, you want your body to succeed and your body also wants you to succeed at diabetes management. 
Yeah. And I think like one of the biggest things that being immersed again, like with my roommate is knowing that like, if there's an off day that happens, you did not fail. It is an experiment. You're learning how your body is working. Like if it doesn't work out, then we try something different the next day or we try something different for mealtime or we like, but like, you're not failing if something goes wrong, you're doing right. the best that you can. And like, this is a whole lifelong journey. It's not going to be perfect, but like you guys are like, y'all are buddies. Like even, <laughs> you know, it's, and again, like as someone who doesn't have diabetes, like there's a lot of empathy in those around me and there's a lot of fight in there and it's not yeah. looking at them like, oh, they have it. Like, yeah. of course there's empathy in that, but it's like, no, like that, I'm watching people around me like it doesn't stop them it's it's really hard at times and it's just as someone who doesn't have it like being supportive and like knowing that if there's an off day like show up like yeah don't don't be rude don't like don't be that person don't police or helicopter just show yeah. up and be supportive and and love unconditionally and just ask what what it is that you can do yes yes I thank you thank you so much for, for saying that especially like the the policing factor um you know, we, of course we care about the people in our lives and we want them, we, we, we want them to be healthy, but it's not helpful if we see them trying to enjoy, for example, ice cream, like you and your father enjoy, and then for someone to police that and say, well, you can't have it because that, that ice cream, it represents more than just, you know, a, a feeling of enjoying something. It's like, oh my God, my life, my life can continue I can enjoy it the, the way I, I need to enjoy it. I can still have- There's that. gratitude in it. Yes, yes, perfect, perfectly said. And we do have a lot of people who watch, who watch Beyonce too, who have family members and are unsure of actually how to be supportive. Like what words of encouragement do you have? And what, what advice can you give to those people who are trying to be better support, supportive members? Uh, I think the biggest thing is like, it is like when it comes to someone's diabetes it is not about you mm. and it's very for some people that is a very tough thing to understand <laughs> yes. um but it's like if somebody like if somebody is having a low and they're either getting moody or uncomfortable or panicky not being like well you should have done xyz well maybe you shouldn't have taken so much and maybe da 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 no like that is the last thing that they need in that moment that is literally like just leave if you're gonna do that like that is not helpful what is helpful is seeing yep. something comfortable and saying is something off like are you too high are you too low how can i help and like leaving it at that like if they're just a little off it is not personal it is not about you and that's like the biggest thing or like if somebody again like if, if, kind of what you had mentioned before like if somebody is having sugar or if somebody is having sweets or food that they enjoy who are you to to tell them no this is something that they understand how it affects them and it's understandable that you want to be protective and especially right. if it's like your child or if it's something new that you're both learning to understand and you're doing it together yeah. then that's kind of a different situation of like okay how does this affect you should we should we look into this while it's happening like yeah. should we learn a little more about it but if it's somebody that you know has had it for so long or if it's a friend of yours like the last thing you need to do is tell them how to live their lives they're all they're they know how to do that I promise you so. yeah yeah absolutely and also like another way to be supportive is just to listen sometimes like, if you don't if you don't know if you don't have you don't always have to have a solution right then and there sometimes mm -hmm. a person with diabetes and I have diabetes so I I, I have those off days sometimes just being there to listen can be so helpful because that person is probably looking for for just someone to talk to and just kind of get a lot of things off their chest diabetes can be overwhelming and stressful and you can have those off days and in on those days to be supportive sometimes just lending an ear can can do so much yeah a support system is definitely important because it's like diabetes burnout is absolutely a real thing and it's not something that's talked about it's something that like especially when like my roommate had first learned about it and then it just became rigorous out of nowhere she's yeah. quite the minimalist and so to now <laughs> have to like keep in mind and carry a purse of like her yeah. insulin pens and then like uh i can't remember what it's called but like the emergency one if she gets too low and she passes um, out yeah amazing it has, like, yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and so like having to carry that and figure out how it works it became so stressful that she kind of shut down for a couple of days and was like 
it's so overwhelming. I don't understand. And the biggest thing was just allowing her to feel that and not saying, well, it'll get better. <laughs> like, <laughs> what does that do? No, she's venting. She's upset. And right. that's okay. Yep. That is okay. You don't have to fix that. Just be there and know like, okay, you're not feeling so hot right now. I will feel not so hot with you. We are sitting in this together and whatever you choose to do next, like I am here. And sometimes like that's, that's more than enough. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I know like I have, um, I have parents, uh, one of my parents and um, a grandparent has uh, type two diabetes as well. And one thing I like to do to make them feel better is, is to make them laugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, about anything and like that kind of like that gives it levity and and then when you, once you have the levity like their minds are open to like okay you know what? I feel a little bit better let's I'm ready to talk about the problem and problem solve going going yeah. right for it and you know like having having adult parents who are so who are set in their ways and they have have their own identity it can be it can be a little tough as a child to kind of say hey you know I let me let me help you like the, the way yeah. that you help me yeah, absolutely. I, I completely get that and agree with that. Yeah. So I, I think, um, I think we're coming up on time. So I, I definitely want, um, if you have any other like words of encouragement, is there anything else that you will love our audience to know about, about you and your father's um, journey in type 2 diabetes? Yeah, I mean, for those who have either type one or type two, it doesn't have to stop you from doing the things that you enjoy. It's just understanding how your body works and how you can work with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then for those who don't have diabetes, but somebody in your inner circle does, just being supportive and knowing that also like this person's life does not stop. And, and therefore, like all you need to do is just love and support and and just show up and if they need something you ask if they need help and if not then you enjoy life for who they are and, and know that like diabetes it's not their title it's not what they do and like who they are it's just a big part of them but like you love them for them and making sure that they know that I think is really important yes absolutely Di diabetes is not is not who they are and you you love them for them that is a great note to, to end this on Lori Thank you so much for joining us today at Beyond Type 2. We really appreciate having you here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And, and to everyone who's been watching, I hope that you enjoy this conversation. Please visit beyondtype2.org for more information on how to live with type 2 diabetes and send it to your family members. You never know what may help them. Have a good one.